Hi everybody, welcome back. Today we're super excited because we're gonna be talking about the snake plant. Yes, and specifically this big beauty before you, the Laurentii snake plant, and how this is a great house plant for your home. It's just quite a big girl. We're gonna show you some others here that we have on the table, but we're gonna be focusing on the Laurentii today and how you can take care of her. So, you all ready to dig in? Sure I am. Let's grow. The Laurentii snake plant goes by the botanical name Dracaena trifasciata Laurentii. She also has gone by, and that's the name I have, I learned her from in school, was Sansevieria trifasciata Laurentii. The botanis, the botan, the botanics? Botanical? No, I always do this wrong. The botanist. <laughs> the botanist. Sorry, sorry, botanist. The botanists drive me crazy, not with their name as much, but with them constantly changing the genus on many plants. And this plant is now commonly called Dracaena trifasciata laurentii. But you'll see them on, when you were buying them online or at a, at a nursery, you would see that they're also called Sansevieria. That's not the name I thought you were gonna use. Oh no, okay. <laughs> so with, with that, I love this plant because it's Super, super exotic. She's from the west, I think the west and central parts of Africa, mm -hmm. which is really, really cool. And she has some other really cool features that Amy's gonna tell us a little bit about. What are they, Amy? The first one is they have sword-like leaves. And right, Rachel's Rachel, going to cool? point to them so you can get an isn't idea of what that looks like. So it's a dark green with this bright yellow, yellow green or yellow margin. Mm, so cool. And the next is they're very resilient, which for me is very good because yes. I tend to sometimes forget about the plants and they are hardy. So yes. that is also a very nice quality amongst yeah. the plants. It's a very forgiving plant and, and I love snake plants in general because they're that way and we'll go into plant care in a minute, but this is a very resilient plant. This one is, is, tip, is grown in our bedroom actually and we'll, we'll go into that because there's another cool feature about them. But I'm a giant and I bonk her and so some of her leaves are all wonky and leaning sometimes because she's because I bonk into her all the time. But she just keeps chugging away. I've even broken a leaf at the tip on one side but she just, just keeps doing her thing and, and growing away. So I just, just adore her. She's a really, really cool house plant. But to go back to features, there's a really cool there's thing. There's another feature that is touch. also very good is their natural air purifier. Wonderful wow. plant for your bedroom. So when you're sleeping there at night, this plant actually at nighttime tends to um, work that cycle where they're giving off more oxygen than most other plants. Plants go through a normal a period of time throughout the day where they absorb um, CO, carbon dioxide and give off oxygen. But at, there's also at night, uh, plants will go into a dormant, most plants will go into a dormant where they're not really doing that, except the snake plants are very good at night for providing more oxygen. So you get this really good plant to provide you more oxygen while you're sleeping. And they're like HEPA filters in the sense that they, they suck out VOCs. And I swear to, I didn't even clean her before. Oopsie, I don't know if you can see this on camera, but there's so much dust that gets caught on her leaves and she's just like a giant dust magnet, which is getting a lot of stuff out of the air as well as a filter. So they're, they're really cool in that regard. They take care of chemicals in the air you can't see, but they also get rid of dust particles. And that's a really cool feature of the plant. How do they collect dust? The leaves, I don't know if it's a, if it's a, for the scientific part of it, if they're, one part of it is like a static buildup where they, they're negatively charged and the dust is positively charged and they go to them, but these guys, for whatever reason, they attract the dust, attract from dust the like air. crazy, which means you do need to wipe them down. But even if you don't get to them, you know, for a month or so, they're still going to just do their thing and keep growing. They don't grow super fast, but but they're they're just so exotic and so cool for a house plant. Yeah. And we have what? One more? We did. We talked all three, three yeah. of the main ones. Yep. All now right. I think we're going to go into a couple of different varieties. Mm -hmm. Even though we're talking about the Laurentii, we have some beauties before you here on the table. And the first one we're going to be talking about is this little cool lacy one, which is the fernwood. And we love this plant. It's very grass-like. It's, it's all in the snake plant family. And she's just a beauty. Doesn't grow as tall, much more small for a tabletop. And if I rotate... Rachel, what is that one? The starfish. 
We have a starfish before you. We've done videos on, on the, our channel to this about taking care of houseplants, and we've actually were propagating this in one of our videos. And I think a, it looks like octopus dental tentacles. Oh, okay, yeah, cool. Yeah. But it's really, really exotic. You know, these are all, all these are good at, at being HEPA filters, natural HEPA filters for your home. But these are more diminutive in size and could be on a tabletop where this one is better, more for, for um, a ground. Or you can do something exotic. And before, we'll, we'll mention that in a minute, we're gonna give you a little uh, surprise on something that we're gonna be doing in another video about the Laurentii. But we also have one more snake You're plant. You're familiar that we, with this one, it's the moonshine snake plant. Love her. She's got the new little leaf coming out right over here, Rach, isn't that it? So pretty. And our babies that we just did a video on. She's got new leaves here. Look at that. We did a propagation video and she's just growing away. She's got some more over here. Just so adorable. Moonshine's such a cool plant. And so of, you can propagate and make more plants for yeah. your hats. And what we, a happy plant. We, we did this from leaf propagation and, and it was a, a nice, of. Uh, Folk, uh, one of our subscribers who asked a question and she was, I believe it was, uh, uh, she would mention that when you do it this way, they don't tend to, to get the very deep moon, moon glow leaf, but ours has got that, it's definitely got that light moon glow mm -hmm. look to it. So ours is doing that for, for whatever reason. So maybe, maybe that's just something we were fortunate in the leaf cutting that we had. It is, it is not reverting back to a dark green, but it's definitely giving us a light moon glow. So is, so is that one there. So pretty. So now that we talked about that, these guys in general, we have one more surprise. What is that, Amy? What are we going to be doing in our next video? Oh, that's right. We're going to be propagating by taking, mm -hmm. Rach, you hold that. And we have another, another Laurentii. Wow. One. And we, in my office, I want, I, I do so much uh, editing on Final Cut to do the videos, and I'm there all the time, hour after hour, to try to make them, make these videos. And we hope that they're they're of a quality that is good for you all to enjoy watching. And but I want to get that free oxygen because I'm right there, and I want to have a wall of green behind it. So we're going to do another video. Uh, so stay tuned to our channel after this one because we're going to do. We have several of these planters, and we're going to be propagating or taking divisions of these and making these really cool wall of green so so stay so tuned. make sure to tune in for the next yes yes but before now now that we've talked about just the basics about the plant in general and the, and the descriptions of these plants and some of her friends and cousins we're going to move over into plant care and tell you tell you all about how you can take care of your laurentii in your home so let's go on to that step with plant care let's first talk about lighting your Laurentii snake plant is going to want medium light, and that's going to be north of 500 foot candles, but she is so adaptable. She can go well below 500 foot candles and still do fine. So you can go somewhere between 500 and 1000 foot candles and she'll love it. Ours is getting about that in our bedroom. She's near a west facing wall, a west facing window, sorry, and she does fine. So snake plants in general, are very adaptable this is part of the resiliency again that you can have her where they get a lot of light in your home you just don't want to have her get her direct sunlight but she can also go in an area where there's not much light at all and still hang out and do fine so it's really cool really cool tough resilient plant in that regard as is in that once you get the right soil mix she doesn't need a lot of care and that she you need to tend to her and that soil mix is what Amy? what's that what's that ratio it's a seven to one which is seven parts of cactus potting soil mm -hmm. two parts of perlite yep. and one part of worm casting right and you'd like to also and rachel's holding this up a dash of mycorrhizal which adds beneficial fungus and bacteria to the soil mix and it helps the plant absorb water and nutrients which is the next thing we're going to talk about and watering your snake plant in the Laurentii and wants to be watered every three weeks to four weeks. It's very, very tough. It doesn't need a lot. You do want to water well. You want to water it deeply, but then hold off. Don't, don't sit there and water this thing once a week. That will kill your plant. That's the one thing that one main takeaway I want you to know about snake plants in general is that they're super drought tolerant. They don't need a lot of water. They store a lot in their leaves and in their, and in their rhizomes below ground. So, so water every three to four weeks. You can rotate. I haven't rotated mine very much because I haven't had a chance to get to it because they shut down our balcony and everything was moved in our house. It was a hot mess and we moved a lot of stuff over here with Amy. Um, and thank you for that and, and Rachel and everyone in your family for, 
allowing the plants to come here while our other house, our apartment's a mess. Now that we covered watering, let's talk about fertilizer. We recommend a liquid fertilizer be added to your water from April through September, the growing season typically here in South, we live in South Florida, but in worldwide in your summer months, your spring and summer months is when we recommend adding in that liquid fertilizer and, and, and it's, it's not very strong. It can go lower. It, it's, you don't have to even fertilize. You, this plant is that tough, but it just helps give it a little bit more energy and nutrients and that that's a good thing to do. So you can do a, um, add that to your watering every three to four weeks from that from April through September and your, your plants are going to respond well to that. Now after fertilizer, we want to talk a little bit about temperature, humidity and pest. Temperature, temperature of the plant will do fine in your home, 65 to 85, no problem. Humidity, 40%, which you typically have with home AC, she's gonna, she's gonna be fine with that, no issues there. And this plant is pretty, snug. this plant is very tough in regard to pests, it doesn't get many. So that, all those things are makes this, this plant super resilient. I haven't, we haven't had on any of our snake plants any issue. None, none of them with pests. And we've definitely had them with our Hoyas, by the way, which is, this one here, the tricolor, I'm sorry, I'm totally going off script, but this thing is pink like crazy and loving it. This one, she loves it here, Amy. Oh, so beautiful, that tendril. Oh, she's so happy here. Anyways, digressing, now that we, yeah. <laughs> now that so we've talked we about. They, the pests don't like them. Yeah, pests won't, won't, won't mess with your, with your snake plants, they're great. Now that we've talked all about that and I've done all over the place. We're going to go and rotate into written care instructions so you get it in depth and you can take a screenshot and have all this that I've just talked, we talked about, and then we'll come back and do a quick closing. So let's go on to that step. We hope you had a great time. Amy, did you have a good time? Absolutely. Yeah, how about you, Rachel? I always have a good time. Good. Peachy so, keen jelly bean. Yeah, peachy keen <laughs> jelly bean. Oh, I like that. If you guys have any thoughts or questions, what are they supposed to do, Rach? Leave a comment down below. Mm -hmm. And if you would like and subscribe, we would really appreciate it. Thank you all so much. Absolutely. Yes. All of us really happy. Yes. yes. And come back and join us for our next video. Yes, because we're going to be we're going to be taking baby Laurenti eyes and making that wall of green. That's right. So, exciting. so don't forget to join yes. us. Yes. And subscribe that way. You'll that way and hit the and hit that bell. There's a I think the bell notification allows you know to when new videos are coming so you can take a look at them. That's right. All right, until that video, see you later. Bye. Bye. Nailed it. Please remember to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. And tell your friends and family. We post videos weekly. Thanks.